Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Leslie here, also known as Fresh Limps, and welcome back to my channel. So I always get asked how I do my braids. So I did recently do my braids about two, three weeks ago. I can't even remember, I don't know what day it is. Um, but I always get asked like what the process is, like if there's a video that I can direct people to. So I am a beginner when it comes to braids. I only really started doing it myself last year um, for obvious reasons. I had a lot more time at home. I couldn't go to the salon or a stylist to do my hair. So I thought, let me learn how to do it myself. This video will be the entire process. What I usually find easiest to do, tips and tricks, etc. Braids take a long time. The question I get asked the most is, how long does it take you to do your box braids? And it can be several hours. The quickest I've ever done the physical braids is about five hours, but in general, it can take six, seven, eight. It really depends how fast you are, how many braids you've got to work with, how much you're using in terms of extensions. My braids are always really long, so that's why it does take a while. So because it takes so long to braid my hair, for ease, I tend to separate the braiding process or the whole process into two days. So on day one will be all the prep. So the prep of my hair, the prep of the extensions, and then day two is the actual braiding and finishing, styling, setting, etc. To prep my hair, I'll use a clarifying shampoo. I want to remove as much buildup as possible. Basically, you want a really clean canvas, a clean scalp that you're starting with. And then I also want my hair to be really hydrated and then in the best condition possible so i also go in with a deep conditioner as well and then i might apply an extra product to my ends really get it in there and make sure that my hair is super hydrated so after i've washed conditioned then i'll go in with a blow dryer just to stretch my hair out in general i cannot put braids in especially if i'm doing them myself if my hair is not stretched out in some way for me, blow drying is the easiest. I use a Dyson Supersonic with a comb attachment and it's just very easy to get it straight quickly. But you don't have to blow dry your hair. If you have other options, you can try those. So you could try um, twist outs, braid outs, you could try banding, anything to basically stretch your hair. If you don't have to do much, you, like you don't have to blow dry. I don't actually use that much product on the prep day as well. So after I've used my deep conditioner, etc., the only product I really put in my hair is um, heat protectant, maybe a little leave-in conditioner, just so it's more like pliable and soft. But in general, I don't want to put loads of product in my hair before I braid it. So then the last step in prepping my hair is to go through and section it all. And I hate sectioning my hair. I find it so tedious. I really hate the process. I find it so difficult to section my hair. I don't know if this is like a universal problem, but I really struggle with my hair. In order to see it, I usually need a mirror in front of me and a mirror at the back. So yeah, having several mirrors is really handy. I'd say in general, don't obsessed too much about the partings and how they look. Um, I did watch a lot of videos on sectioning. I couldn't find many that were that helpful just because I found it very difficult to replicate someone else's partings on my head. Um, you really do have to take into account your density, um, how your hair falls, where you want your hair to fall. I think it is easiest to start with three main sections and then make sections within that. And with your sectioning, with each row, you want to kind of stagger the partings. I think they call it the brick layering technique. So when you look at a brick wall or tiling, you usually don't have the tiles match up in straight lines. They're usually staggered. And that's what you want to do with your parting so that when your braids fall, they don't all fall in the exact same spot. Because that is a very long process for me, that's why I tend to keep it on day one with the prep. And I just section each bit off with an elastic band to keep it all separate and nice and easy. You could go in with uh, twists or braids to keep it separate that way. It's really up to you. And then the last step on day one is to prep the extensions. So if you're using extensions, you wanna wash them, you wanna stretch them out, so give them a nice tapered look. Just makes things a lot smoother when you're coming to braid your hair. So I always use the Expressions Ultra Braid 100% Connecalon hair. Um, the one I get is the one that's not pre-stretched, but you they do sell it as pre-stretched, but what I found is the pre-stretched is usually shorter. So if you want your braids to be as long as mine, I'd say get the one that's not pre-stretched, but if you want them shorter, um, yeah, the pre-stretched is fine. I use the color number four most of the time. Four is like a really dark brown still. Um, I've also used shade two, which is more of a really dark brown. So when it comes to actually stretching the extensions, 
this is not a hard process but again it's really long and tedious so again i just suggest pre-stretched hair if you just don't want to go through that process so this is how it looks straight out of the packet when you get the one that's not pre-stretched so the ends are blunt you could have your braids like this if you wanted them blunt at the end um, but if you want more of a tapered look if you want it to be more seamless when you get to the ends um, that's when you stretch it out and this is how it looks when it's stretched out. I do think it's easy if you pre-section the hair so with each piece that you're going to take if that's sectioned out it helps to have a thread rack. I don't have one because I just don't have space for all these different things that you need to do things but if you're going to be braiding your hair often definitely recommend a thread rack or even if you've just got a dresser with um, little knobs on it that you can just keep the hair sectioned and left there so you can come back to it later. So moving on to day two, which is the actual braiding process, you've made it. In theory, if you've done your partings before, you know what size you're going to do, that should make it a lot easier as well. But then you also want to decide on like what braiding technique you want to do, whether it's knotless, with a knot, or elastic bands. There's so many different options that you can try, and I think do play around with a few and then get an idea of which ones that you like, which ones last for you. For me, I prefer knotless. I just feel like they're way more comfortable. Your head's not killing on day one. You can, they're very flexible, they move around. I feel like they look more natural. The only thing I would say is knotless in general does not last on my hair. These just start to look messy very quickly. Because I can do them myself, if they start to look messy, I could just take one out and do it again. I do think density in terms of your hair and whether it's fine or thick or medium or whatever, that does um, make the braiding process a little bit tricky. Like my hair is very fine in general all over my head and in the middle it's very dense. The ones around my head and the bottom where my hair is the finest and um, not dense at all, uh, these are really tricky to add extensions to especially when you're trying to do knotless. For me I find knotless really tricky um, unless my hair is quite, you know, there's a good amount to start with. Um, so maybe even if you were doing braids for the first time you could just do chunkier sections and then start with that. Yeah I just find adding the extensions in general like more tricky with knotless braids but that might just be my skill level because I'm still learning. Some of you might do knotless and find it really easy. When it comes to actually doing the braid I do use gel around the parting and then also on the ends to keep the ends tucked in. Me and gels don't get along. I've tried so many and I hate most of them. So the gel I use is either the ORS olive oil, the Pequi oil one, so the red one, or the Cantu Shea Butter for natural hair, extra hold, edge, stay gel, <laughs> this one in the orange packet. In general, I find gels really difficult, but these are two that work okay for me. I do also like the Curls Passion Fruit Curl Control Paste. I put a little gel at the top and I brush that through so it's not tangled. Then if I'm doing a knotless braid, I start by just braiding my hair for a couple of turns before adding any extensions. And this is a lot easier than trying to add the extensions at the beginning. So I kept this quite slow so you could actually see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna show the process on three separate sections of my head because you can kind of see the difference in density as you move from the front to the back of my head. So I'm adding very small pieces of the extensions because I want it to look natural. I definitely could have gone a lot thicker with this particular section because this part of my hair is fine with like little density or it's not as dense as other sections of my hair. And it's definitely better when you start off with a thicker braid and then it slowly tapers off. But yeah, that's just the learning process that I need to get my head around. I do find it really tricky to add extensions to my hair. And when it comes to me adding them, I do it in a very lazy way. I just kind of add the pieces to the two legs on the outside. And if you're using small pieces, it does look pretty seamless. Um, but there are times when it can kind of loop and bunch up if you try and take two bigger chunks. That's how I add the extensions. I do really small pieces and I braid this down as far as I can be bothered, to be honest. This is quite a long braid. So I kind of went down to my, roughly my waist. The whole hair actually falls around my bum and I just kind of stopped and then moved on to the next braid. I'm gonna do, again, exactly the same process, but because it's slightly more denser than the front section, it means I can, again, start by braiding my hair for a couple of turns before I need to go in with an extension and I'm using a very tiny piece 
when it comes to extensions just to kind of again thicken it up a little bit and also so I can continue on the braid and make them ridiculously long. I do really like using small pieces just because I think it looks very natural. These braids in general are quite thin um, and the reason I keep them this thin is because then it's not too heavy on my head so I can still have that length without it feeling like it's too much on my head especially because I have got fine hair you don't want to like overload it with loads of extensions. Um, and then cause any damage. So with this third section that I'm gonna show, uh, again, you can see it's a little more denser than the one before it, and that does mean that I can braid a lot more of my hair before I need to go in with extensions. Again, if I wanted it thicker, I could have added extensions earlier, um, and then that just makes it a bit more seamless when it comes to blending the ends. But I will talk a little bit about that when I get to the ends. But yeah, with this section, I got to basically braid it down for about a couple of inches before I even really needed to add anything. So when it comes to braiding as well, I do switch back and forth between underhand and overhand braids. Basically, to add the extensions, it's easier if you're braiding um, by putting the pieces in from the back. Um, but then it, when it comes to tucking the hair, it's easier if the braid is overhand. That was really awkward to explain. But I think the best thing is to experiment with different techniques and find whatever you're most comfortable with. And then when it comes to blending the ends, I do go in with more gel. This just kind of squashes everything down, makes it a little bit more seamless, makes it a little easier to tuck it all in. Um, and yeah, just continue braiding, adding small pieces as I feel is needed. When it comes to adding the extensions, there's no real rhyme or reason to the pieces that I'm adding. I'm not adding a certain amount of sections or anything like that. I just kind of feel how it's looking and I, I'm trying to match it to the ones in front of it as much as possible. So that's kind of my thought process when it comes to adding those pieces. And I kind of just have the pieces laid out on my lap so I don't have to keep going back to the bundle of hair and kind of trying to section the pieces off. So they're pre-sectioned basically. But yeah, this is me after I've done most of the hair. So you can see like a lot of it, I didn't braid all the way down, but yeah, it's very long, very thick at the bottom. So I've been braiding for however many hours and I get to the end and it's all done. Um, then when you're finished, you want to set your braids. And again, this depends on what hair you used. Um, but if you use expressions, you can basically dip it in hot water and that will set it all. And that's kind of it, you're good to go. If you used curly extensions, um, you might have to tie it off the end um, instead of putting hot water on it, or you might have to put a um, flat iron or a straightener on the end just to kind of seal it off and you basically melt it a little bit and that seals it. That's the whole process. It's really long-winded, I'm not gonna lie, and that is why I do separate it over two days. And then the other question I get a lot is how long do you leave them in for? That's always a really tricky one for me to answer because of the job that I do. Just for anyone that doesn't know, I am a full-time content creator. I also do modeling as well. And usually I get booked for jobs based on my curly hair. So when I have braids, a lot of brands don't want my hair in braids, either because they're hair care brands and I've got to demonstrate a hair care product, or they've just booked me based on a different look. So they want that look, they don't want the braids. Sometimes brands request braids, which is always really fun. So the last proper shoot that I did, as in like not at home, brand actually paid for a stylist to put my hair in braids for the shoot, which is really cool. So that was nice. But in general, what that means is that I can't decide how long my braids are gonna be in. Sometimes I'll put them in and two days later, a brand will be like, we want your hair curly for this shoot. Um, because a lot of what I do can be quite last minute. It's not always, you don't always get advanced notice for stuff. Yeah, so it's always really tricky for me to say how long my braids are gonna be in my hair. And that's why I kind of wanted to learn how to do them myself because there's nothing like paying 160 pound for braids to have to take them out a week later. That's just not, that's, that's never fun. If you have more autonomy over your hair, say a good range is like from four to eight weeks. Um, you can push it longer, but it really depends on how well you're caring for, for your hair. So that's really up to you. So as well as care, your hair type, what type of braids that you've got in terms of either like if they're knotless or they're chunky or they've got a knot, 
or they've got curls running through them so they're goddess braids all these things will depend on how long your braids last i feel like if your braids are smaller they tend to last longer um i feel like if they have a knot on my hair type they last longer but it really depends some people can wear knotless for months and months and be fine i had knotless in for three months before but i did redo some of the braids to make it last longer because you have to factor in so many different things i can't tell you how long your braids are gonna last so i think that's it in terms of what i can think of as questions but if you have any let me know and i will answer thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in a new video soon bye